All right, what's going on, dudes? And welcome to episode seven of Let's Build an Adventure Map. This time, we're going to be doing some terraforming, and I'm joined by two members of the Voxel Box. We have Ridge Dog, who's actually the owner of all the hardware that is the server. If you want to say hi, hi fans. <laughs> And Gil Twist, who's actually done a great deal of terraforming for the map already and will continue to do so as time goes by. And he is basically like the super pro terraforming guru. So that's why. We well, have it really him. helps when you uh, design the brushes. Yeah, that, that would do it. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is sort of freestyling it, I suppose. We're going to be using some of the voxel sniper brushes to build some hopefully cool landscapes right around us. Voxel Sniper is basically a plugin um, that was developed by the Voxel Box that allows you to use preset brushes in order to make really large scale adjustments to terrain and in turn make some, uh, some cool stuff. And it's gonna be used a ton on the map. So we thought we'd give a bit of background on it so that you know what's up when you see it in future videos and when you play the map once it's released. So. Mad props to uh, Perzuap, the guy who actually is the brainchild of uh, Voxel Sniper. He's the guy who put it all together. So Indeed. Uh, round of applause for him. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, shall we? So I'll go ahead and start off by laying down some stone voxels of radius 10, or simply cubes of side length 20, which is around 8,000 blocks at a time, disregarding any overlap, which is pretty crazy if you think about it, that you can simply place down that many blocks in one fell swoop. There is an undo command though, so if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world and you can simply go back and fix it without much worry. Now I should mention that the arrow I'm holding is the paintbrush for Voxel Sniper, so that is why I will be holding it the entire time in order to paint the landscape. Now I'm laying down the foundation for what I plan on turning into a pair of arches that'll originate from that one central starting point and branch off down to a valley, which Ridge Dog and Gil Twist are actually clearing out at the moment with brushes of air to just crater out the land. Now, if you saw that hemisphere up in the sky, that's actually something called wraparound. And it's kind of funny, say you are at the Y equals five coordinate, which is uh, vertical up and down. So you're five blocks from the bottom of the, the block limit on the world and you sniped like a uh, radius 10 sphere, the blocks that couldn't fill in below the world will actually wrap around to the top and they'll appear in the sky. So it's kind of funny and you want to avoid doing that or you'll have a sky filled with unwanted blocks. So it's an interesting bit of notch code, I suppose. So after I've laid the foundation here, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to uh, a sphere and I'll go ahead and just give some variety to the already really rough shape, but I don't know. I just felt like doing it so that perhaps when we transition over to the melt brush, it'll make something a, a little bit different. And again, I am a, a total beginner with Voxel Sniper. I've only made a couple creations in the past with it. Arches being my favorite, which uh, apparently is nothing strange. Apparently, most people who, who just start off like doing arches as well. Now the melt brush is used in order to, as it would suggest, melt away the jagged edges and such as is created by the, the large voxels. And the, the arch will start sort of taking shape as I go through with this. Again, it's nowhere near finished, but it'll start looking less robotic um, as such being made with pre-made shapes and whatnot. And as I go around, I'll end up refining areas a little bit too much and that's not a problem because I can actually go back with the fill brush which is the opposite of the melt brush and that'll go ahead and actually extrude parts of the land and it'll fill them back out with blocks if I happen to make them a bit too skinny. Now that part right there, that little plateau, what happened is I actually built the voxels up to the, the very top of the world and you actually cannot snipe when you're above the block limit so we actually have to go ahead and just manually delete some of those layers right there in order for me to go ahead and use the melt brush effectively on it. And here I've switched to the fill brush and I'm going to fill out areas which I either melted down a bit too much or which I think should be extruded out to, to blend in a little bit more. So once I've gone through with the melt and the fill brushes, alternating them to the point where I feel pretty comfortable with the way the structure has turned out thus far, 
I'll go ahead and I'll transition into what's called the blend brush. Now, the blend brush is effectively the icing on the cake in that at this point, although the structure looks a lot more natural than it did with just voxels and spheres in the beginning, it could use a bit more smoothing and that's exactly what the blend brush does. It makes it look more like it was generated with Minecraft's terrain generation script and it makes it look a lot more polished and nice. And again, there are actually a lot more brushes to, to play with that I'm not using in this video that can accomplish a whole bunch more cool effects. But for the most part, this is a good way to start off with placing down an outline with the voxels and the spheres, smoothing it out with the, the melt brush and or the, the fill, and then polishing it up with the blend brush. And you can probably see it starting to take shape at this point, and it looks much, much more polished than it did just a few seconds ago. So now that I've gone through and polished and refined the structure using the blend brush so that it's looking much more natural, I'll actually go ahead and transition over to the overlay brush, which will start adding our finished terrain to the arches. In this case, we're going to start off with some dirt at depth four, which basically makes the first four blocks in every single column turn into dirt. At this point, now that all the dirt has been laid down, I'll go through and switch the overlay brush to a depth of one and lay down some grass on the very top layer of the terrain. And more or less at this point, it'll start blending in with the rest of the world and perhaps look as if it were even generated by Minecraft itself. Maybe, had we not sniped it there in the first place. <laughs> and I gotta point out, I personally really love the grass colors from biome to biome with the space texture pack. I think they look very, very pretty. So I'm always happy when we lay down grass. Now I'll go through with the big tree brush, which just generates some larger trees, actually using Minecraft script, um, the one built by Notch. And it'll only place trees down if they would go there normally. So you can't say place trees down sticking out from the side of a vertical cliff wall. It won't happen. Um, and now I've switched over to just standard tree size brush and I'll go ahead and I'll fill out the rest of this. I was wanting to start off with some bigger trees down at the bottom and then as I work my way up, uh, transition into some smaller trees on top and leave it a little bit more sparse as we go, as if we were going up to a higher elevation and trees are gonna sort of stop growing due to lack of oxygen, maybe? I don't know. And then I'll go back, switch over to big tree once again and uh, fill in on the other side and top it all off and fill in a little piece of grass that I didn't get earlier. And after all that, we'll do a little bit of final finesse and then it should be looking like a finished product. So after going through a little bit more on the arches with the tree brushes, Guild Twist and Ridge Dog are pretty much finished on the valley. They did an absolutely awesome job. I did my best on the arches as well and we're gonna go ahead and add one last little waterfall that we thought would look good. And then after that, we should be good to go. And finally, the part that I enjoy the most, which is where I get to go through and try to capture some more or less cinematic shots in the hopes of making the whole thing look probably more dramatic than it really is. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching nonetheless. Hopefully you perhaps learned something about terraforming and how Voxel Sniper works, so on and so forth. And if you're interested in more, I'll actually link the Voxel Sniper information page that's on the Voxel Wiki in the description of this video. So if you want to learn more, if you want to implement it on your own server, you can go ahead and check that out as well. But other than that, big thanks to Ridge Dog and Gil Twist for helping out with this, as well as all the terraforming on the adventure map itself. So, I don't know, hopefully you'll see this in the map as well. And on that note, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.